Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to address a question from an Augie, and of course, I'm going to go into way more detail than I need to, because we're going to talk about amplifier efficiency in the final amplifier of your standard run-of-the-mill modern transistorized HF rig. Nick Appa of the UK asks this question. Why does my ICOM 7300 draw 18 amps? After all, 12 volts times 10 amps will give you 120 watts, which is way more than you should need for 100 watts. Well, the question has to do with the efficiency of the amplifier. The first thing to note is that single sideband is a linear mode and requires linear amplifiers. If the amplifier is not linear, you can get mixing products between the various frequency components in the speech wave form. So we want to transmit it without distortion. Now this picture shows the power amplifier unit inside the ICOM 7300. Now every other transistor um, based HF radio, whether it's ICOM, Yesu, uh, Kenwood, Alinko, uh, Tentac, uh, whatever, whatever, uh, they all uh, have the same problem and, and come up with about the same answer. Now you will note down there in the uh, uh, photograph, I've got this, the power amplifier, there are two, two transistors. The ICOM service manual for the 7300 states that these are in a push-pull configuration, which implies class B, but I think there might be a little bit more to it. Let's look at classes of amplifiers. I'm only going to look at the linear amplifiers. There are many other classes of amplifier, many of which are nonlinear. Uh, class C is used for CW and FM. Uh, class D and E can do some amazing things with some filtering and so on. But class A, B, and AB are your classic linear amps. Now class A is the most linear and most inefficient. The maximum efficiency is about 25%. The class B amplifier is linear except it has something called crossover distortion. In the max efficiency is about 68 percent and this requires two transistors back to back. Class AB reduces the crossover distortion for a penalty in efficiency. Let's look at how these three classes are created. Up here is Class A. Now you have a single device. It is biased into the middle of its linearity curve, which means it's sucking power all the time. If you put a waveform into it, it inverts, but you have the same waveform coming out amplified. Okay? Now here is a class B over here in the upper right hand corner, and each of the two halves back to back are. Um, the top one will amplify the part of the wave that goes above the uh, zero line and the other part amplifies the part that goes below and then they're connected together and you get this waveform out. Note that it's non-inverting. But the thing is that right here at the crossover there are some non-linearities where you try and stitch these two waveforms together. This is called crossover distortion. When you hand off from one transistor to the other transistor right here, there's usually a little bump. Now, class AB takes the class B arrangement that we have here and adds just a little bit of biasing to it so that it's mostly the top amplifier here and then the other one doesn't kick in quite as much. So you move away from that crossover point so it can reduce uh, 
crossover distortion on the way out. Let's look at the ICOM 7300 schematic. This is the schematic, or part of the schematic, of the uh, amplifier board, the power amplifier board. ICOM calls this push-pull. They don't identify it as being class B or class AB, but note right here these diodes. See the diodes? Doesn't that look familiar, like right down here, where it has the diodes? Yeah, they're configured a little bit differently, but I'm going to say that this amplifier is probably class AB, which means it's quite linear. It's very linear. They can do a little bit of filtering on the way out to make it really linear. But uh, what you have here is an attempt by ICOM to make this a very nice amplifier. And it is a very nice amplifier. Um, now, if we go to our summary chart, we see that the 7300 efficiency, the input according to the spec from uh, the manual, is actually peaks at 21 amps maximum. Now, about one amp of that goes to the receiver, so that leaves 20 amps. Multiply it by 13.8 volts, which is what we actually run the radio at, and you get 276 watts. That is the input power. The efficiency is 100 watts out divided by 276 watts in, which gives you 36% efficiency. Now, note that this includes the driver power. The, the driver actually consumes a little power, which it uh, uh, releases as heat. So the final output amplifier is a little bit more efficient than this, but overall 36% efficient. Note that this is consistent with both classes. It should be a B right there. Let's make this change to a B, consistent with classes B and AB. Now, does this mean that the radio is dissipating the other 176 watts as heat? No, actually, you don't want to do that because the radio hits 100 watts only on voice peaks or during a dit or da on Morse. Now, if you're going to use another mode that has high duty cycle, you must dial back the power. For AM, you have to dial it all the way back to 25 watts. For RIDI, you probably don't want more than 50 watts. PSK31 is a digital mode, and you probably want to drop that back to about 30 watts to keep that amplifier extremely linear, because PSK31 uh, relies on linearity. If you're going to use something like FT8, which is only transmitting for 15 seconds at a time, um, and then listening for 15 seconds, uh, you can dial up the power a bit more, although it is not recommended because FT8 is a low power mode. So there we have it. We go through the math, we look at the kinds of amplifiers that we are using. Note that we are using linear amplifiers, and linear amplifiers are always inefficient. There are other classes of amplifiers that are coming a little bit more into play. I'll just give you a little teaser. It's class E for the QRP radio that I'm putting together right now, and it's called the QCX Mini, and it uses a class E amplifier, which is a non-linear amplifier, but uh, it's either on or off and uh, uses some interesting filtering to make it work. So there you have it. Nick, the answer to your question is yes, indeed, the radio is inefficient. Less than half of the power, only 36% of the power that goes into that radio goes out. Okay, and that is normal, common, and is the same as all the other 100 watt modern radios, they have about this same efficiency factor. So there you have it. The cause for this uh, question comes from the efficiency of a class A or class AB or class B amplifier. Linear amplifiers are always inefficient, which is one reason why people have tried to move away from linear modulation like single sideband AM 
and some of those things like that. Single sideband is about eight times as efficient as AM because you don't have to put the other sideband out there and you can drop the carrier too. So lots of different things to think about. So Nick, your radio is perfectly normal. It is acting as designed. So if you would like to support this channel, please take a look at decastler.com slash support. Also, please subscribe. I've noticed the number of subscribers recently has skyrocketed. That is just absolutely super. And if you have any comments on this video, please feel free to comment. And press that like button if you would. Until we next meet, 73.